Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back for another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2 video, the new Sacred Beast Structure Deck. Let's try it out. I believe most cards are up on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, so let's try them out. Not really sure if the full Structure Deck is already revealed. I feel or I think we might expect more cards, but not 100% sure about this. But we've had like two small waves of um, like leaks, I guess we can call them. And uh, now it definitely feels like a deck. It has potential, but it's weak to um, the most basic interruption. So well, you'll see that uh, if you haven't read the cards or if you haven't seen them um, like on play or in play in a duel, you'll see that the deck uh, has potential. It has some nifty tricks, but again, it's vulnerable to the basic disruption in today's format. This is my current list. Again, like always, feel free to leave suggestions. Um, Anaconda because of the fusion, right? Only one fusion here in the main deck. Um, I feel that the four lords, I, I, I feel is fine, Hamon, or uh, Hamon, however you want to pronounce it, I feel is currently the better one because of the interaction with one of their continuous spells that has the ability to negate a spell or trap from your opponent. So that's good if you have an Hamon on your side of the field. Um, they have a couple of lower level monsters. They have Stratos. They have, um, and also the Stratos gives you the potential extra normal summon for the turn for those low level uh, zero attack monsters, right? The fiend types, if not mistaken. Uh, it also has like a core with that basic combo with Al Mirage, which is also featured here in the video. The basic combo um, or the basic starter for the deck is either open with their Stratos, the level 2, which also gives you the extra normal summon, and at the same time, uh, and or their continuous spell, which is their Rota. Rota and the Monster Reborn uh, all in one. So again, if you think about it, quite uh, nifty. Uh, their field spell is also searchable off of the, the yellow one, one of the Chaos Monsters, I believe the name is, uh, but just simply banish itself from the graveyard. So then you can search the field spell and as soon as if you, if you control like all the Lords and that includes the fusion, you can draw two cards and that counts during every turn. So, you know, like only your turn, of course, but every turn you can use that effect as long as you control a Sacred Beast, a Lord on your side of the field. So again, quite nifty, <laughs> a pot of creep points per turn is uh, quite crazy if you think about it. But again, we're talking about Sacred Beasts. Uh, one of the other cards is uh, one of the newer cards, uh, were, uh, at least that was revealed, is one of the trap cards. I'm uh, not really sure about the name, Sacred Beast Awakening, that's the name. It has the ability that depending on how many different uh, lords you have on your side of the field, at this moment I do have two, both Hamon and uh, Reveal, or Reveal, however again you want to pronounce the name. Um, again, those effects stack up. So if you control one of the Sacred Beast, one of the lords, uh, you always gain life points equal to the amount of, um, well yeah, uh, well, equal to the attack uh, points of uh, a monster as soon as your opponent summons that monster. So it feels like, um, you know, that old school strategy of that, um, one of the, the, the continuous spells of invasion, invasion of Chaos, one of the old school sets that uh, gives you, uh, I forgot the name, but it gives you life points every time that um, monsters or cards are banished. You know, it feels that way. But the second effect is much more important, is that that Continuous Trap can turn itself into somewhat of a skill drain from your opponent. Well, skill drain, it negates activated effects from the opponent's monsters as soon as you control two different, um, yeah, lords on your side of the field. So again, Haman and Raviel, Raviel on my side of the field. And I think I have the trap card. Yeah, indeed, there it is. So now all activated monsters, uh, or at least all activations, from monster effects on the field are definitely going to be negated. So it's good. I mean, that, that's solid against a lot of decks. This is quite solid. And let's not forget, I think I have the continuous spell indeed, the middle one next to the trap card, that as soon as you have an Hamon on your side of the field, you can switch it to defense position as soon as your opponent activates a spell or trap. So again, that's a once per turn, right? And let's not forget, Hamon in defense position gives your field some extra protection. The field spell again, a pot of greed once per turn, and uh, it also gives your uh, lord some extra protection, I believe, from being, prevents them from being destroyed, I guess, from, uh, I, I believe, card effects. Anyway, tour guide is sweet. It opens up the potential sang and search as well. Okay, you can't use it during this turn, but you will just be summoning the normal summon, well, the Stratos, that only gets the effect on, uh, upon its normal summon, so you will just use it next turn. But that opens up the Cherubini play. Cherubini sending, uh, let's, well, basically any of the core chaos, uh, well, yeah, like the, the small chaos monsters, depending on which one, uh, which one you want to have in your graveyard, thanks to your uh, Rhino as well. 
And uh, again, that makes the deck somewhat flexible. So opening with Tori Guide is definitely one of the stronger plays you can do. And again, your desired setup is get through your Stratos or get to your Stratos, your level 2, and or your uh, Gates, the continuous spell. That's basically a Rota and a Monster Reborn all in one, at the discard cost that is. You know, Monster Reborn something at the cost of discarding something. But for this deck, that's definitely, well, it, it's good. I mean, there are cards you want to have in your graveyard, like they're level 5, for example. So banishing the yellow, it, it searches out the field spell, so now I need to get the big boss on the field. But um, yeah, and that's the problem of the deck, is one Appaloosa kind of crippled me here in this situation. Unless I missed something, if I did, my apologies. But I didn't think I had an option to force out Appaloosa once, attack over it, and then, you know, keep uh, playing after that. Well, I could have gone for maybe a Link 2 play, but what uh, would I have done after that? Maybe going for Cerberus or Phoenix, attack over Appaloosa. But after that, it would not have any... Um, not have had any follow up place. Next example. This was a good one. So uh, I think uh, going second, not really sure. Or am I going? F yeah, they're going first indeed. No, the next one is a good one. So again, good uh, opening. I mean, this 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 feels just uh, the best field. I, I feel you can pump out first turn with those double um, double lords on your side of the field. That of course the monster negation against your opponent and the continuous spell that negates uh, spells or traps from your opponent once per turn, right? By putting Hamon into defense position, getting Uria on the field, and thanks to one of the new ones, the small chaos monsters, it feels like a lone fire tribute itself to special summon a lord from your hand, a sacred beast from your hand. So again, quite flexible of getting these beasts on your side of the field. And with their first wave of reveals, it's, um, you know, the, the re reveal or reveal uh, 2.0 gives your deck the potential OTK, you know, attacking multiple monsters from your opponent, doubling the attack of your uh, regular good old school reveal, or reveal again, however you don't pronounce the card. So the deck has some potential to OTK, but um, again, it's so vulnerable to disruption, right? Especially if the deck goes second. This was kind of a crazy duel. Uh, anyway, so normal summoned uh, with, with the lone fire again. I think yeah, that should indeed be the lone fire if I have a lord in my hand, but you know, I, I can't use the effect because of the uh, true king of all calamities and ordeal of a traveler is a cute tech. Um, I mean, you can get it back from your graveyard with the other trap, the Uria trap, which currently I'm not a huge fan of, but depending on the, you know, the other support, if there is other support, that might be a good one as well. But currently, I want to keep the main deck at 40 cards sharp. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm going for the trap ratio of 3-1. I prefer their uh, negation trap a bit more over the Uria trap. So yeah, Ordeal of the Traveler uh, well, kind of comes into play here, bouncing back the, um, the True King of All Calamities. And here, this is actually a sweet topic. So Normal Summon their Stratos, Surge their um, Rota into Monster Reborn, which definitely forces out the... What is it called? The Conductor, but that Link Karibo, that sneaky Link Karibo, it gets me out of this terrible situation. So eventually get Haman on the field, and of course the field spell by banishing the yellow one from the graveyard. Getting those two extra draws, but again the, the Earth True King banished my fusion from the extra deck, so I can't go for the fusion summon. And that Reveal 2.0 doesn't really matter too much here, or didn't really matter too much in the previous turn. But in this turn it lets me, uh, you know, pump up that Reveal, the good old school one, to 8k, and that should be. Uh, that should be game over, right? <laughs> Whoever taught this, uh, um, <laughs> this would happen during the, the the first tool, I guess, or yeah, the first uh, after uh, the first uh, opening game. But that's how it is. I mean, the cards are still new, right? You know, it, as soon as people know how to play against this deck, um, it's not really that hard. Stopping those crucial plays. Let's say the Stratos, for example. Again, the Stratos gives you the extra normal summon, and this is quite of a standard play by going for Al Mirage. Al Mirage tribute itself to target your, um, what is it called, your core, I believe the name is, Future Fusion, the three uh, lords to your graveyard, and then, of course, going for Anaconda, thanks to your continuous spell, the Reborn Anaconda, and, you know, going for the Fusion in defense position. Since, again, only during your own turn, it will gain the extra attack boost, uh, pumping itself up to 10k. It can't be destroyed by battle, but again, everyone and their mother is running multiple main deck outs against something like that. And let's say Unicorn is, is one of those easy outs as well. Um, this is uh, kind of terrible, I guess the danger engine comes into play, Phoenix, and that's the big weakness of this deck, a spell and trap destruction. Getting rid of the field spell first, um, you know, no protection anymore, and then, you know, you, you know, you can just go for Unicorn, for example. 
and uh, not really sure if there was the potential uh, ability to go for game here but uh, yeah ending on Appaloosa I guess is fine as well I can't play around that the the level 5 dark one can banish itself to search a lord from your deck add it to your hand but that's basically it so I I, don't, I didn't see any follow-up place, um, again, because of the Appaloosa negation. So, so the deck definitely has potential. It has a Pot of Greed. It has a Monster Reborn. It has a Road. I mean, the deck, again, starts off okay. Initially, I thought, man, this deck doesn't really seem that great. But, you know, starting to playtest it, it has a potential, but it needs more. It definitely needs more. And I'm anxiously awaiting their new support, if, if there is, again, more support. So again, like always, feel free to leave suggestions. Um, guys, okay, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Leave them signing out. Peace.